Well folks, it's been quite a while since we last did a video like this, a cash cow video, but of a different type, not just another build for Lamar, and I want to give a special thank you to, and yet another reason why you should be on the HSG Discord, to Fran on there, of course, long-time member of the Discord. This is a build, it's one of a couple of builds technically that you could use, a couple of vehicles. You will need at least two cars in order to do this. You'll need either the classic Beetle, or this Abarth. The Abarth does seem to be the better option. If you're watching this video on the day of release, you can still buy this in the used dealer as well, so that's handy. And you'll also need a Red Bull. In particular, ideally, the Red Bull X2014, because it has the highest point level. Now, this is probably something which will be, at the very least, adjusted, if not outright removed in future. And, of course, that's always the problem with exploits. So use it while you can. So I'll be following a tune that Fran actually used in the Discord, so full credit to him there. And as far as the cars, of course, you can see the two here that I was mentioning. The reason why you need these two is because, as you would expect, it's all about the point level. The Red Bull is super high. The reason why we're not using the Tomahawk, though, is because the, the gearbox, the transmission in particular, is something which really plays in, well, all of the factor here, really. So first of all, I'll show you what you need to do with the Red Bull. So you need to jump into your settings, and in particular, you can pretty much leave everything else. I've set up the suspension really badly because the AI is going to be driving this car for you, and you can probably see where this is going. You don't really need to do that, though. The main thing is to go to your transmission and then set your auto setting to the lowest possible, then go into the actual manual adjustment, and you want to get all your gears to go crazy like this, down to 126 kilometers an hour, apart from last gear, seventh. Put that one as long as it can go. So in other words, the car will get through its gears really quick and then have the most sluggish acceleration imaginable. And then the final drive is all the way up as well. So you don't want to have the final drive all the way down because obviously that will allow first through sixth to be too useful. So I would strongly recommend doing what I've done there. I'm sure there are technically other ways of doing it, but this one works perfectly. And then as far as, and of course, pause the video and, and check that out if you need to. Then as far as the Abarth though, I'm not going to run into the upgrade shop because it's pretty self-explanatory what you need. You do want the engine swap on this one. I think it's the, is it the K20 engine? I think it is. In fact, I can see here. Yeah, it's the K20 Civic motor. I think it has the wide body. I think that's what I've gone for. And you will want the front chin splitter and the rear wing as well, because downforce does play a factor. Like I said, this is Fran's build, or at least that's who I saw it from. I'm not sure if they originated it or not. You want your racing hards on the front, racing softs on the back, fully customized suspension. As far as the ride height, 115 and 125, 10 for anti-roll, 35 and 45 for the compression and the rebound, on the dampers 2.50 and 2.85 for the springs 2.6 and 1 for camber then as far as tow it's towed out 0.10 on the front and towed in 0.45 on the rear as far as the diff 25 15 and 15 they were actually using nos i didn't bother fitting it because it's really not necessary but of course if you want to go for it you can i guess as far as the transmission as long as you've got a decent top speed it really doesn't matter too much you can get this easily up around 200 miles an hour I've gone for the setting of 290 kilometers an hour, which is more than quick enough. In fact, technically, you could probably make it longer and just not even bother using the top gear. But again, it's down to you there. As far as the ballast, you want 82 kilos. Put that all the way toward the front and the power and ECU restrictors are untouched. As far as downforce, 45 and 100. And then for the rest, you can see all the stuff here. I've got anti-lag, the high RPM turbo, all of these racing bits and bobs, as you can see. So again, if you need to pause it and double check, the rule of thumb here is pretty easy, though. Just buy everything. <laughs> Just buy all of the top-level parts once you've done the engine swap, of course, in particular, and then you're pretty much ready to go. Now, jump out into the main menu, and technically, you could probably do this with a couple of different events, and I actually did try doing this at RootX as well. You don't earn as much, though, so if you do find this to be maybe a bit too difficult, maybe you're a, perhaps a newer player and you find the car too twitchy, Go down here to Route X and you can do the same thing, pretty much. Do it on one lap and it takes about, what, five minutes, five and a half, something like that. But in particular, you want Daytona. On Daytona, come down to the Custom Events, go to the Oval, and then I've already got this one saved. Load it here, and then you can see the setup. 200 grand for five laps. And the reason why it's 200 grand, as you'll see in a second, you can set it on as many laps as you want because it does multiply, thankfully, in a better way than it used to. So if you double it to 10 laps, it does double the payout. 
There is one crucial reason why I would say you should probably not do that though, and that is that if you do make a mistake and lose the clean race bonus, it will make a big difference to the payout. Because the payout is 200 grand, or just under, but it's pretty much 300 grand if you get it clean. So that's a big difference for a race that barely takes four minutes to do. The reason why I think it's better to do a five lap rather than 10, 15, 20, or even more, is because if you make a mistake on lap nine, or on lap 90, imagine how annoyed you'd be. Whereas if you do it in increments of five, at least if you do mess up, it's not too bad. It's not like it was a long event. You want 20 cars. Uh, the start type doesn't really matter. Rolling start is easier to get off the line though, or because you're not getting off the line really. The starting grid, you want to be all the way at the back. The start interval doesn't really matter. You want your boost turned off, weak slipstream. Uh, this other stuff doesn't matter too much. The time of day, again, weather, all that kind of stuff, I'd recommend having it sunny and dry, because of course it's easier. As far as the difficulty, you want it on pro, pretty obviously. Select your rivals from garage. This is essential for this, because you specifically want all of the AI cars, as you can see here, to be using the Red Bull. The Red Bull that you've set up to have a horrendously bad top speed, which means that this Abarth can literally beat all of them easily. So. That is all fitted there, all of these penalties and stuff down here, you could double check that against yours if you want to, it doesn't really make any difference in practice. But now we'll jump into the race itself, and the long story short is, as I mentioned, because the Red Bull's top speed is so bad, and because the Abarth can do 200 miles an hour, it's an easy win. In fact, the only thing that makes it a little bit more of not necessarily a challenge, but it does require a bit more focus than just a completely brain dead way of doing money is because of course, being a tiny 200 mile an hour car, you do need to focus a bit more through the corners. In fact, I would recommend at least using this tune to just back off the throttle as you enter the corners, let it kind of coast with a little bit of throttle and you can see how I'm doing it here anyway, and then kind of power out. You can go over the yellow line, a little bit. You definitely don't want to because the car will become unstable, but it won't, uh, you know, take away the clean bonus if you do that. It only seems to take it away if you hit the wall or if you hit other cars. So avoiding the cars is easy. This is another reason why having it set on five laps is ideal, because even if you're doing, say, 46, 47 second laps, you'll only just catch up to the cars again, which is hilarious to think of, by lap five. So you don't even need to worry about getting around them again and potentially losing the bonus. Whereas if it was 10 laps, you'd have to lap them at least twice. You know, the first time that you get past and then again. So having on five laps is much easier. This is a pretty fantastic method. You get 300 grand from five laps, as long as of course you do it clean. And in practice, that's a sub five minute race. I mean, it's virtually four minutes and you could probably get quicker and quicker as you get better and better. Like I said, you can technically use the Beetle as well. There's no real advantage in doing that. And the Beetle is certainly twitchier or at least as twitchy. So go for this one if it's easier, but maybe try the Beetle if you can't find the Abarth yet in the used dealer. And as far as the cash, like I said, 300 grand for about four or five minutes, even if you say five minutes, that makes it a hell of a payout. It's like three and a half million credits an hour, I believe something like that. So until they do make some kind of change maybe, or patch it or whatever the case may be, it is by far the best cash cow method in the game that we have at the moment. And of course, milk it for all it's worth while you can. It's good for your daily mileage as well, so that's another bonus. Of course, like I said at the start of the video, if you're not already on the Discord for the channel, not only for stuff like this, but for the silhouettes each month and all kinds of other stuff, including, of course, car talk in general, you should be on there, so there's a link to that down below. And of course, stick around on the channel for more tunes, builds, car reviews, and news. But for now, thanks for watching.